So much thanks to John from San Jacinto Trail Report. His information was invaluable. Also to um, Jackpot, uh, Bad A, to Worth It, and to Drip, who forged the path before us. We also met Alpine and Sebastian on the way, who were finishing it right behind us. Solo, you all are awesome. Um, and then others that we don't know who were ahead of us, too. We think that we might be the first people who went through without any breaks. We didn't take any zeros in Idlewild. Um, we were able to go through. We had perfect weather window. Um, so I wanted to pass on some advice. First of all, make sure if you're doing this that you have the correct gear. If you're going to be doing the whole thing, you must have crampons and an ice axe. You've got to have a stove with extra fuel because you're going to be melting snow the whole way. Um, make sure that you have warm clothes. Be prepared to sleep on snow too. Um, those things are really important. But now we want to give some advice. So if you are, and, and by the way, um, I'm, I'm Quakey Leaf. I'm a very experienced, well, I'm a pretty experienced mountaineer. Um, I've taught uh, ice axe self-rescue and done a lot of, um, I've climbed all the volcanoes in Washington and um, done a lot of scrambling uh, across the U.S. and in some in Canada too. So I have a lot of experience and... Um, just 15 who was with me has climbed over 53,000 meter peaks across South America, Asia, uh, the Alps, um, and Africa. So we both have a lot of experience and we discuss this a lot. So here's our advice. Number one, if you are a through hiker and you want to get a little bit of San Jacinto, you don't want to skip it, go to Phobes Canyon. It's fine. You could go to Phobes Canyon, drop down. You could get some of the beauty of, of San Jacinto. Um, you'll want to bring micro spikes, um, but I don't think you're going to need an ice axe. You could bring one, but um, I don't think you'll need it um, anywhere on that section. You can see in the video, we've got lots of details for you. But you can go to Phobes Canyon, come down, go to Idlewild, and then from there, go to the Bear Mountain Road. That's a great route, and lots of people are doing it. And that's what we would recommend for most PCT hikers. If you are a person who has had um, experience with an ice axe and you have um, you have micro spikes, crampons preferred, you can go to the Spitler um, trail exit. You can go up to Spitler and hike down, but you are going to be getting some snow with exposure. You're going to be getting a lot of flow down to climb through. And we did meet some hikers who it took them a full day to go from Phobes to Spitler. So keep that in mind. Um, but if you're looking for a challenge, do that and then go up uh, Bear Mountain Road, Black Mountain Road, excuse me. Now, after that, if you want to go from Spitler and you want to go over, um, and oh, by the way, Apache, if you're going to Spitler on Apache, the best way to go is over at the top of it through the saddle. It was clean. It was It was easy. That's the way to go. I would do that and not do the traverse as other people are recommending. I'm echoing what other people have said. Now, if you want to go from Spitler to Saddle Junction, uh, Devil's Slide, if you want to do that, or if you want to go from Devil's Slide up Jacinto and you want to go down out, um, what's that ridge, Just 15? Fuller Ridge. Fuller Ridge, yeah, thank you. If you want to go Fuller Ridge, at that point, you better be uh, have a lot of mountaineering experience. I and so have mountaineering experience really for real. Like not not I watched videos and I think I know how to self arrest. Like it is muscle memory because a lot of places if you go down and you don't have a fast self arrest, it could be death. It's really it's very dangerous if you're a person who doesn't have that kind of experience. Um, also, um, just 15 is a super experienced mountaineer. He had aggressive micro spikes, Salewas. Um, I would recommend, and that worked fine for him, I would recommend true crampons. Um, and I, you know, me using like heavier running shoes was probably not enough. I would go for a heavier, heavier shoe or boot. The other thing is, if you want to take this on, and it's a long, you better be fit. We, we were doing an average of 24 miles a day in the first seven days. And um, the uh, 
and, and we were doing some 27 mile days. That's kind of where we were when we hit this. And those long days, day two and three were 12 to 14 hour days and totally exhausting. So keep that in mind to make sure you've got the fitness. It's serious, it's for real. It's, it is winter mountaineering up on Jacinto right now. Um, and then the last thing is start early. And I don't mean like kind of early, I mean wicked early. We started one day at 2 a.m. The next day we started at 1.20 a.m. And I might even go to midnight. It's alpine start time because when it turns off and you are post holing, it is absolutely exhausting and it will wear you out and you won't be able to get it done the way you want to. So um, start really early. Get the right headlamp, get going early. You know, you want that snow to be firm and you want to have your crampons ready to go. So that is my advice. If you want to do the whole thing, make sure you've got the mountaineering experience. Um, but if you get up there, you can you can definitely go to um, Phobes or you can go to Spitler if you're looking for a bit more. And you can always take a look, but it's real. And I just want you to know. And that's where we were in uh, here in, in mid-April. So there we go. Hey, have a great time out there, everybody. And for those who are skipping these parts of San Jacinto, you are smart and you are awesome. Like, don't worry about that. It's a really good decision to not do what we did. So, there we go. Much respect, everybody. See you on the trail. Here's Quake and Leaf. Woohoo! -woo! Hey, Just 15. Yeah. It's our first blowdown on the trail. Yeah. Pretty mild here, but what mile is it right here? It's, it's mile 159.1. Okay. And that's also where we just saw the first little patches of snow back there. But so far, the trail has been perfectly clear. Yeah. 159.1 is the first minor issue. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here is the trail. It's 6,780. We haven't had to deal with any blowdown yet at all. And we've walked down snow for a couple of feet. So, so far, this has been totally fine. I mean, it's a, it's a strenuous climb, but there's no other challenges. It's just, I don't know, normal. Would you agree? Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, so here's the trail at 6,800 feet. So we're kind of up on this lower ridge before you drop down to the uh, Phobes Creek Trail cutoff. But 
you can see there's no snow up here. So again, no snow yet, no blowdowns yet, no issues at all. And this is beautiful up here. So great so far. All righty. Okay, here we are at mile 163.5. This is the first snow we've seen on the trail. It's really short, ends right up there. But this is the first snow that we're seeing. 163.5. For blowdowns back there, there was some stuff. It was an easy walk around. There was nothing. So here we are, 163.5, and still no substantial challenges. Okay, so this little bit of snow, we're at like 170 or something. Okay, no micro spikes are needed. It's only like five steps with no bad run out. So there's that, nothing, nothing yet. Okay, so right here, the uh, trail kind of disappears in the snow. You just have to kind of use your GPS and take a look. Down there, uh, Just 15 is taking kind of an alternate. He's gonna have to swing up, I think, where I'm staying closer to the PCT. It's all good as long as you are aware of where you're going on your GPS. Okay, so we're actually right now at 164.1. And through this area, patches of snow, blow down, it's kind of hard to follow the PCT. So this is a spot where, but you know, we're post only a little bit up to our ankles. Um, and you just use your GPS to keep yourself on track. It's not too bad, but it is a good spot for gators and snow baskets that's for sure we should change to those all right okay so once you're up here uh just above uh on the descent going down to phobes i'll tell you what it is beautiful wow Okay, we're looking at Hemet Lake. Hemet Lake. Hemet Lake in the distance over there. Some towns down there. And that's kind of the road that heads out toward uh, Idlewild. But really, not too far in the distance over there. And I don't know if it was clear if you could see the ocean in the distance, but it's definitely out there because we're not that far from it. And then over here, San Jacinto, we're getting closer and closer. Pretty cool for tonight. So, over here is Phobes Ridge, and there's a trail that goes down right over here and goes down to where those houses are right there. That is a very easy exit, and you can tell it's snow free. So, that's one. If somebody wanted to come up and just do Phobes, like that's that's definitely fine or if they got up here and they didn't they felt like it was over their head or they didn't want to finish or whatever it's an easy exit so that's really nice to know the next one that's Spindler right here the trail is going to go on the right side of it and there's a little bit of snow back here we can see so we'll have to see what that's like when we get there and you come around the back and and uh, that's where the trail for Spindler is, is right over in that area on the descent to Sophobes, there's some snow, but it's just small steps. No big deal. So this is the trail going down to the saddle at Phobes. We've had some snow. There's definitely some rock work, but that's normal for this area. It's uh, a little overgrown, but it's really not that bad. Then to get to a snow patch like this, but there's a clear boot track. A little root finding. I think this may be the worst bit of blow down that we've seen right here. Um, I'll just walk on through with my phone going. This is the worst one that we've seen. Okay, somebody could hurt themselves here. Okay, that was a little bit of a brushy battle, but no big deal, just be careful.
we are. Starting off with a 2 a.m. start. How's it going, Jess 15? Ah, it's going good. Uh, and there are the lights of Palm Springs. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell, but the trail's down there. And here's some uh, climbing around the downfall right here. So back that way, it was kind of like this. And you can see there's a little slope and some runoff, but uh, run out, I mean, but we're being here really early. This is really firm, really good steps. So if anybody's coming up here, we started off today at two, and so far I'm right, two, right? We start at two? Two? Yeah, 2.08, yeah. So, so far I'm really happy with that start time. All right, but it's, but we don't have on micro spikes, and it feels totally fine. Poles with baskets, gators, that's all so far. Okay, so, we just took off our crampons yeah. and uh, micro spikes. And what we decided is that good micro spikes back there would uh, be optimal. Although the crampons were fine too. Um, but one of those two is required. Yeah. And there were places yeah. back here where you, uh, if you took a hard fall, it would, it could be a life risk. So, if someone is not comfortable on snow or with some exposure, um, or if they don't have spikes at least, I would go down at Phobes Creek. Would you agree? Yep, let's go act. Okay. Okay, so here we are, we've made our way down the uh, bridge. So this is the trick right now, is to go down the saddle between Apache and its uh, the slightly lower peak to the east. And the saddle's easy going. And then you catch the ridge and you wanna stay on the ridge and follow that ridge down. There's a marker on the ground so we know that humans have been here before. But, uh, now what we do is go ahead and then we catch up with the PCT right here. So Apache, the stuff, the stuff that was leading up to uh, Spitler was definitely scarier or had more exposure than the stuff around Apache. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, here I am looking back at the saddle with the lower peak here and Apache over here, kind of off in the distance, and we went through this way. So we hung to the ridge, which cliffed out. So don't do that. Instead, after you come down, immediately continue on to the PCT. That is the better route. Even though the ridge looks good on the topo, it's not. Come back down to the PCT. So past Apache, waking our way around or toward Anvil Rock, there's several spots like this. North facing slopes, bad run out. We're wearing spikes through this and using poles, but an ice axe might be a good idea. Anyhow, yep, there you go. Okay, so here's the deal. Here is Apache Peak. We went through that gap, followed the ridge a little too long, had to back off and came around. Switchbacks in here. 
lot of uh, snow exposure in different places and run out that could be pretty bad. Here's Anstel Rock, I think. And uh, trail comes along through here. Did a little bit of climbing to come through this area. Okay, so this is coming around the area near uh, Red Takits, and it's it's solid snow here, across all the way, pretty much snow the whole way up to the ridge over here. Yeah. So again, you gotta feel comfortable with an ice axe for sure, because this is this is not super high angle, but if you don't know how to self rest, well. It's a challenge for sure. It's a little, it's dangerous. So it's also right now about 11 and the snow's getting softer. So early start, really important. Okay, so here's going through little, little Taquitz Valley or near it. And uh, snow conditions right now are no spikes back here. No spikes. No spikes. No anything needed. No post holing today, at least. And uh, yeah, we're just carrying our ice axes. So this is a really nice part of it back here. It's a treat. Anyone else is a treat? There's Mount San, Jac San Jacinto. We'll be heading up there tomorrow if everything plays out the right way, and it is so far. There it is. Our campsite for the night. Check it out, pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, so it's three in the morning, 3.20. We got about a 1.20 a.m. start, and that is making a huge difference here. There is a good boot track leading towards San Jacinto. There's also ski tracks, and we saw some snowshoe tracks, but we haven't seen those in a while. There's a very clear line, but again, getting out here early makes a huge difference. I don't know when this group came through, but they have much deeper steps and they're getting some post holing where we are on our crampons and spikes yep. and we're staying right on top of the snow, which is making this a lot, a lot easier. So that's something to keep in mind. If a 1 a.m. start sounds crazy to you, well, it does save you later. And we are hoping to see sunrise on top of San Jacinto. We'll see. Anyhow, this is how it's going. And it is a steady climb up. We have, um, both of us have an ice axe in our left hand, because on this slope you want your left hand. And then we have a trekking pole on the right with no strap on our hands. So in this technique, if you slip and you use your ice axe, you just toss your trekking pole and it's gone. So that's the plan and here's our route.
Hey, we made it to the summit of San Jacinto. It's just after five o'clock. So we left at like 1.20, right? Yeah. So three hours, 40 minutes or something like that, 3.50. Anyhow, we're up here. I'm gonna show you around. Okay. We'll be walking close to the corners over there. But here, you can see all the lights Palm Springs. Way out there. You can see the sun just starting to rise. And then, here, you can see all the lights heading out toward uh, Los Angeles. All the way out. All the way out toward the ocean. Such a cool place to be! Wow! My God! Wow! And there's the moon in the sky. And there's just 15. Hey. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Here we are on San Jacinto. Okay, look at how fun this descent is. This descent is so fun. You can just go however you want. It's just free form. I don't know, how about over there? Sure, let's go that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just have to say that today is so damn cool. Oh my God, wake up at one, climb straight up Jacinto to be there for sunrise, and then just drop, drop, drop down this, just ice axe in hand, crampons going wherever we want, just making our way back down to the PCT. This is like unbelievable. This is a day for the books, man. And it's only like 8.30. <laughs> it's already been. It's already been a day. This is awesome. Yeah. Hey, what do we have here? It's the PCT. It's just that here, it means nothing at all. <laughs> Once you're back on the red line and you're back on the trail, what you get is a whole lot of this. So if you enjoyed the traversing from yesterday, well, you get more of that. If you're here early like us, it's nice and crunchy. There's a lot of post holing here from previous days, but there is a nice boot track the whole way, nice steps. It's clear and easy to follow. And if you're using GPS, it's not hard to find. So there you go.
Okay, so now we're descending to the Fuller Ridge. Okay, so here we are at the beginning of the uh, Fuller Ridge, and the Fuller Ridge is the one that's out there. It's kind of uh, deceptive when we were looking at the map and seeing that in the distance, but that's it. And the beginning part of the Fuller Ridge, you're on the ridge, just cruising through the trees here. It's noon right now, and the snow's pretty soft. Um, so just like everything on this whole adventure, if you're watching this video and you're hearing me say start early, let me say it once again, start early. But there is Mount Saint San Jacinto in the background. That's cool. We were up there today. That's so awesome. Okay, there we go. Back on Fuller Ridge. What is that stuff down there? Dirt. We've got dirt yeah. here on Fuller Ridge. Check it out. There's even dirt on some trail up there. Man, that's that's cool. I'm gonna have to take my crampons off. We haven't seen anything but snow all day, 100%. This is the very, very first one on the way to, what's it called, Castle Rock or something? Anyway, this is the first dirt we've seen. It's cool through here. Fuller Ridge is beautiful. Okay, here is the downside of aluminum crampons. Now, I love these Petzl Leopard FL crampons. They are like so solid. But when you get to rocks, you have, you have to take them off because they're aluminum and they'll get dull really fast. Where if you have micro spikes, you just move on through because they're steel. So there you go, the downside. Well, the crampons are now on top of the pack, which is really sad. That's really sad. But I want the PCTA to know that I have a solution to the problem because I know everybody wants to just wear their crampons all day. So I have an idea. Why don't you just make the Pacific Crest Trail all snow? Oh, wait. I guess you did do that this year. Okay, so here's where the Fuller Ridge starts to get interesting. So we're doing our climb and... You can see it's rock and snow kind of intermixed and it's interesting root finding and yeah, the trail is down here, for example, right over here, but then it goes through and you just have snow drift after snow drift after snow drift. And that's what makes this an interesting section. Okay, so now, it's the last real climb of Fuller's Ridge. But yeah, this is icy. It's definitely melting during the day and freezing at night. Pretty good climbing. So this is kind of the interesting parts of Fuller's Ridge so far. And some more. So the, okay, so the downhill, starting to work our way down the ridge. It's, uh, it's real soft right now, pushing one o'clock, really, really soft. And we keep doing exactly that. Thanks for the demo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this last bit here, we're down to the last like mile and a half or something. It's uh, 12 hours now on today, and this snow is now really soft, and it's lots of post holing, and this is exhausting. So, it's a cheery ending to a challenging and awesome day. Okay, as we approach the finish, I'm reminded that this is just beautiful out here, and also that this route at this point in time is really challenging. And here's another one going up a steep slope. You can see him up there. Just 15 is up there finishing that, but it's steep here and runs out for a long way. So 
kind of sketchy. And we're right at the very end. Let me just say that uh, this is this is really hard. We're both super wiped out. At camp campsites in like other road is in like. I don't know, 0.5 or something now. But I don't even know how fast we're going. 0.2 an hour? That's what it feels like. Tough. So I just saw Sebastian, which is a, uh, a guy from Montreal, French Canadian that I met on the very first day, right at the border. When I was saying goodbye to my family, I met Sebastian there and he just came through and he did the uh, high route just like us. It's amazing. <laughs> In fact, he didn't climb the mountain. Um, so it was a little, um, you know, a little, a little less challenging. And he made it through a little bit faster than us, too. But, uh, yeah, wow, that was really cool. And he talked about how he was, he was at Warner Springs on his birthday. And he just stopped and cried because of the beauty. And, uh, yeah, I had tears in my eyes because of the beauty of that place, too. He said that, uh, just wait for what's coming up. He said it will blow our minds. <laughs> really, really cool, his, like excitement for the day and enthusiasm and it's really cool to see hey just 15. hey how's the snow this morning oh it's very good very firm and fantastic yeah it froze last night didn't yeah. it yeah it makes it such a difference yeah yesterday same snow what were we doing? Yeah, it was all over yesterday. Post rolling and all this stuff. Post yeah. slipping, falling. Yeah. And this I can run in. Yeah. Yeah. Such a difference. Here's hiking down off of uh, Black Mountain Road. The trail down here is beautiful. Micro spikes are helpful in some places for sure so we're both wearing micro spikes crampons would not work here but look at this view what do you think just 15 yeah great <laughs> Yesterday we were on top of Asento, and today we're going down to the desert floor, way down there. That's the floor that has uh, Palm Springs in it. And here's this trail right now. It's beautiful. Here. Okay, we just heard our first rattlesnake and I saw it right here on the side of the trail. But I'm not, we don't know where it is right now, so we're not gonna look any more carefully. Well, we got here. It's uh it's gone now. It definitely rattled. How do you feel? Yeah, are you are you gonna tell Anya about this one? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Now it's even more. You have to lean into the wind.
hit the summit of Everest. We're getting totally blown away. <laughs> have to lean in. Just 15, is this the way? What the heck? Look at all this mud and weirdness. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> There's guys on three wheelers.